thoughts and concerns for Leicester City developments this morning with the news we broke on Good Morning Transfers that Kasper Schmeichel is set to sign for Nice in France. He'll undergo a medical with the Ligue 1 club in the next 24 to 48 hours after an agreement was reached between the clubs. Quakey, this is a very strange timing, isn't it? To lose such a key player now, a few days before the start of the season. It's very, very strange time, and he is one of the Leicester stalwarts, one of the greatest ever players. Um, is a man that co-lifted the FA Cup uh, in 2021 alongside Wes Morgan. He was there as part of an integral member of the part of the Premier League side that won the title in 2016. And to lose him a few days before the season starts is very, very puzzling. They must have somebody in mind who's going to come and take that number one shirt. But he's somebody that not necessarily just. It wasn't just about what he did on the pitch, it's about his presence off the pitch as well and in the dressing room. And testament to him as a footballer, being the son of, of Peter Schmeichel, one of the most famous Premier League footballers, one of the most famous goalkeepers of all time. And being able to live up to that and win trophies and carve out his own legacy in the Premier League is testament to Kasper Schmeichel and he will be a huge miss for Leicester this season. One of the greats of their modern era, isn't he? I mean, they, we will always remember the team that won that extraordinary Premier League title. And then Schmeichel, along with the likes of Vardy and Wes Morgan and Mares, were, were crucial figures. Yeah, he was just one, like I say, one of the pillars of that side. And it's almost the dawn of a new era at, at Leicester. We've seen them, we've seen how many appearances he's made, we've seen how influential he has been. And with the likes of Wes Morgan, who's gone, Jane Vardy's still there. He's the last of that great Leicester side, it, there's going to be a dearth in terms of the experienced voice in the dressing room that can really help Leicester to, to improve on what they had, what they did last season. It was a difficult season for them in the Premier League. They finished eighth, and with Casper Schmeichel now going, there's going to be a lack of leadership and experience within that Leicester dressing room. The big thing would be if you're losing your number one goalkeeper days before the season starts. All these rumours have been going on all summer. It would completely unrest the changing room. Yeah, I mean. Look, I, I, I like Brendan Rodgers the way he was saying about, you know, they love him and everything like that, and he seemed very calm, Brendan Rodgers, but I can't imagine he's genuinely calm. Like, the season is about to kick off. Look, leaves a legacy, sure. 35 years of age, 11 years, won the Premier League. Wonderful, wonderful memories. But this is, this is, this is you know, Kesper Schmeichel here, his record here, Leicester City's Premier League record, and it's a fantastic record. And, you know... There's the captain's armband there. He is one of Leicester City's leaders. He's one of Leicester City's captains. What an amazing leader he was for Denmark when, when Christian Eriksen um, had that heart attack last year. So it's a big problem for Leicester. I, I know, Nabed, you're going to talk about potential replacements. I wonder if maybe they do replace him. Do they have replacements ready at the club? I don't know. Well, let's, let's get to, um, to, to possible replacements in just a moment. This was, was Kasper Schmeichel just a few days ago talking about his time at the club. To now, it's been an amazing journey. Um, from where we started, uh, when I arrived, we were we were changing in porter cabins and, and driving to a cricket club to train to where we are today. You know, we, we've come a long, long way. I think it's safe to say. So, it's something I'm immensely proud of, and, and uh, it's a journey that that I've enjoyed and I'm enjoying. And uh, yeah, we uh, we we've been so many through so many good and bad things together that it <clears throat> it feels like family, you know, and. Uh, a lot of the staff, particularly that, that were here when I joined the club, are still here. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's definitely family. So, Nabade, Michael touched on replacements. I think the short thing to say would be he's not going to be cheap to replace a goalkeeper of his calibre. I think there is goalkeepers on the market, though. Um, I don't know if you can replace that character, like Kweku just said there brilliantly. He he embodies everything about Leicester in the, in the last ten years. But I do have some options. You've got Alex Mary at Napoli, who's been out of favour for a while. Uh, he's Napoli's number two, he's a decent shot stopper, but didn't feature enough last season. You've obviously got Newcastle's Martin Davravka, who probably won't feature now that Newcastle have signed Nick Pope. But I do worry that with Davravka, age comes in and are you really replacing Kasper Schmeichel for the long term? The one that I really would love to see Leicester go for is actually David Raya at Brentford. Now, Brentford have signed Lazio goalkeeper uh, Thomas, and I'm definitely going to get his pronunciation wrong, uh, Strakosha. Um, who is a very, very good Six goalkeeper. Out of ten. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and David Raya hasn't signed a new deal yet. He's got two years left on his current deal, so they might be able to get him on, on the cheap. So it's difficult to replace a top keeper, but there are options out there. There are options. There might not be too many options in terms of replacing someone of the calibre of James Madison, who is interesting Newcastle. What's the latest on that? See, this is the worry here for Leicester City. You know, we're talking about no signings, and we're talking about key key players potentially leaving. Wesley for fun, James Madison. But the second bid, we're told, is lower 
uh, than earlier claimed. The claim was around £50 million. Now, it's understood the second offer exceeds £40 million, including add-ons, but still falls short of Leicester's valuation for the pyre. Newcastle, firm in their valuation, don't want to be pressured into paying over the odds. We know they've got a lot of money now, but uh, obviously thinking of FFP as well. So how far do Newcastle go? I mean, I don't know, guys. I just, I mean, talks are continuing, but a Newcastle to get to the stage and think this guy's 25, playmaker, English, you need to go for this here. It, it, like you say, he fits the profile what Newcastle need. There's going to be a point where Newcastle might need to break the bank to bring in somebody that... I don't think it'll go co co close to breaking the bank at Newcastle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> a fair yeah, few quid yeah, knocking it's, around. It's infinite. But they, there needs to be a point where they sign a player that can take them to that next level where they want to start breaking into the top six, the top four potentially in a season or two. I think James Madison, like you touched on, uh, Michael, is a player that can definitely do that for Newcastle. Well, I, I just automatically think if, and, you know, if is the key word here, but Newcastle finish above... Leicester if James Madison goes to Newcastle that's how it's that clear for me that's how highly I rate Madison let's have a look at then a, a comparison Nubaid and, and it would be easy to make one with that fella there Jack Grealish they're good mates they're similar they've got a little bit of a sparkle a twinkle in their eye similar Barnets similar Barnets <laughs> yeah you two oh, and good as Jack and James yeah but <laughs> 100 million for, for Jack Grealish we know that was because of a clause in his contract at Aston Villa but 60 million would be good value wouldn't it when you look at those numbers and what James Madison produced to no disrespect, a poorer team than Manchester City last season. It's very difficult to compare Jack Grealish to Madison purely because of the fact that Jack Grealish was leaving Aston Villa and his value to Aston Villa was 100 million due to a contract. I actually think they might have picked up Grealish for 60 to 80 million had there not been a contract clause. Now, Madison, I think, is an absolutely outstanding footballer. 12 goals and 8 assists last season. And he's somebody that I really believe could actually play for one of the top six sides. And as, my, uh, as Michael just said, he's young, he's homegrown. The comparison to Grealish is an interesting one because for a while we've said, we, who's the better player? Who's worth more? They actually play in completely different positions. Um, and we're probably just comparing them on the basis of output. Now that Grealish has gone to City, output's not even become a, a thing for him. He's, he's had to really adapt to Pep Guardiola. I was looking at both their non-penalty expected goals and expected assists last season. Madison's is 0.52, Grealish is 0.51. It's really, really similar, but Grealish got three goals, three assists last season. Madison got 20 goal contributions in total. And like you said there, um, they are two completely different players, but then you look at the narrative that surrounds them. James Madison's numbers year on year have increased in a positive way, whereas Jack Grealish maybe stagnated a little bit last season, but there's a perception that Jack Grealish is a player on the, on the up and coming and next season will come good, whereas James Madison's has been proven it for the last three seasons, but for some reason hasn't got the gloss that Jack Grealish has got. You would potentially argue that... that Jack Grealish is now a cog in a wheel, whereas James Madison is the guy that Leicester give the ball to. Um, let's look at, at Leicester history, Quaker, in, in the sense that their fans would argue, look, it's not the first time we might have sold a big-name player. This is since winning the league amazingly in 2016. A lot of huge figures have gone out of the club, and Leicester have still been challenging for top four, winning FA Cups. So it is capable that they can take the money and go again. With those, you look at that, that's quite incredible. Half of those players have ended up going to Chelsea. So there's, uh, there's, there looks like there's definitely business to be done there. And we know that Fafana is linked with Chelsea as well. So we'll see how that develops. But Leicester have shown an aptitude to, to recoup large fees for players that are important to their side and to come again, like you touched on. But with it seems a little bit different right now. It seems like Leicester are in transition. And we're not hearing names linked to Leicester to replace that some of these players that are linked with moves away. So it... Although previously they've managed to bring in big fees for these players and replace them adequately, I think it's a little bit different this summer because the season, like I say, is only three or four, three or four days away. Michael, is there a, is there a, a, a potential that we're, we're writing them off a little bit too quickly, Leicester? I remember speaking to, to Brendan Rodgers last season. He said, look, being without Wesley Fofana and Johnny Evans, he compared it to, to Liverpool being without Virgil van Dijk and Joel Matip yep. the season before. That He's a very, very good coach with the players he had. And it's too easy to say, well, that they're finished because they're, they're selling a couple of players. No, Brendan Rodgers. No, no I'm, I'm a big fan of Brendan Rodgers. And let's not forget, they did finish eighth. I mean, that, that was pretty good. They had the Europa League, then the Conference League, which they went far in, losing to Roma. So it could have been a great season in the end. So, no, I, I think Brendan Rodgers all in all recruits well. My worry is, is that it's this spine. We're talking about Schmeichel, Fafana, Madison, Tiermans. They're key players in the dressing room. That's the worry for me. But I do wonder if Brendan Rodgers might look at it and think, I might have a couple of goalkeepers at the club now, and Kasper Schmeichel's wages, he was on quite high wages, 
do we try and sit down with James Madison and offer him a new deal? Because I'll tell you something, if he's got two years left, this summer he either signs a new contract or he goes. Uh, we got an interesting tweet actually earlier on the hashtag transfer talk talking about um, Daniel Everson, who was on loan at Preston last season, being a, a good option, who has already made an in the door.